Hello, today I'm going to take a look at the latest back connector motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the B850 Aura Stealth Ice. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed and we'll take a closer look at it. In the box with the motherboard we get some paperwork including our installation guide, we get some Aura stickers, we've got an Aura's badge, we've got the antenna for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, we've got two SATA data cables, we've got a G connector which you'll find useful if your case has separate front panel connectors, and there's three thick and three thin rubber pads for mounting M.2 SSDs. You'll notice that the front of our motherboard looks really clean and that is because all our connectors are on the back. The motherboard is really heavy and that's due to a combination of the large aluminium heat sinks and heat pipes at the front keeping our VRM nice and cool and the large metal backplate on the back of the motherboard. Taking a closer look at the motherboard I'm working along the bottom from right to left. First of all we've got our HD audio port followed by an LED demo port and then we've got a 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector. We've then got a trusted platform module header followed by two USB 2.0 headers and then we've got two system fan headers. Next to this we've got our system panel header where you're going to plug in your front panel connectors and as well as this we've got chassis intrusion, power LED and speaker headers. Just above the system panel header we've got reset and clear CMOS jumpers and finally at the bottom left we've got a noise detection header. Working up the left hand side of the motherboard first of all we've got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header supporting speeds of up to 5 gigabits per second. We've then got another system fan header followed by two SATA connectors. Next to these we've got our front panel type C connector which supports speeds up to 20 gigabits per second. We've then got another 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector with a 4 pin 12 volt RGB connector next to it. We've then got two system fan stroke pump headers and just beside these we've got two temperature sensor headers. We've then got the motherboard's 24 pin power connector and just above this we've got the motherboard's third and final 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector. Working along the top of the motherboard, first of all we got our motherboard sixth and final system fan header, followed by our CPU fan and CPU opt headers. Finally at the top right of the motherboard we've got both an 8 and 4 pin EPS power connector to provide additional power to your CPU. Moving over to the front of the motherboard and at the top right hand corner we've got both a debug LEDs and a postcode status screen which you'll find useful if you need to troubleshoot your motherboard. Between these we've got three buttons, these are for our power, reset and Q flash plus which you'll find useful if you need to flash your BIOS. The motherboard features a 14 plus 2 plus 2 twin digital VRM design and it looks like we shouldn't have any problem with thermals. We've got absolutely massive heat sinks over the VRM and these are connected up with a heat pipe. In the middle of the motherboard we've got our AM5 socket and standard mounting brackets. We've got four RAM slots and the motherboard will accommodate up to a maximum of 256 gigabytes of DDR5 at up to 8200 mega transfers per second overclocked. The motherboard has 2 by 16 size PCIe slots and it's good to see that our top one is reinforced. This is our Gen 5 slot and it will run in by 16 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. Our bottom slot is a Gen 4 slot and it will run in by 4 mode. It is important to note that this slot shares PCIe lanes with our bottom Gen 4 M.2 SSD slot so if you install a drive in this slot the bottom PCIe slot will be disabled. And you just need to press the button over to the right hand side of the motherboard to open the PCIe clip on the top slot. The motherboard features four M.2 SSD slots. We've got one behind the really beefy heatsink at the top and the bottom three slots are behind the lower heatsink. So both our top and bottom slots are Gen 5 slots and they have four PCIe lanes each associated to them coming from the CPU. The middle two slots are Gen 4 slots with four PCIe lanes each but it is important to remember that the bottom slot shares PCIe lanes with the bottom PCIe slot. Take a look at our rear I.O. At the top we've got two rows of four USB Type-A ports with a HDMI 2.1 port in between them. The four blue ports at the top are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports with supporting speeds of up to 5 gigabits per second, while the ports below the HDMI connector are USB 2.0 ports. We've then got three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports 
Two of these are type A ports and one of them is a type C port. And all three of these ports will support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. Next to these, we've got a five gigabit ethernet port. And then we've got the antenna points for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. At the bottom, we've got our audio connectors, which consists of Spitavite, Mic, and Lineout, and the motherboard's using the Realtek ALC1220 codec. So this looks to be a really high-end B850 motherboard, 2 Gen 5 M.2 SSDs, really good cooling over our VRM, and so simple to build in with all our connectors on the back of the motherboard, and really nice to be upgrading to this from my B650 Stealth Ice. So I am planning on getting this into a build on the channel fairly soon. Um, in terms of pricing for this motherboard, it doesn't seem to be widely available just yet. I did find it on sale for just under £270 in the UK, but that was importing it in from the US. So when it comes more widely available, I'll put some links to it in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well.